Bob Troy, Ivan. I am so fucking lonely on the social media. No, you're not. Everybody I, touches your dick. No, I. nobody loves me. Where do I find some love on social media? Everybody loves you, and everybody loves going to Facebook.com slash NerdFunnel, YouTube.com slash NerdFunnel, or our website at NerdFunnel.com to spread the love around. What if I want to share pictures of myself? I go to Pornhub. Oi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, th- that's awkward. I want to show pictures of myself, and I want to see pictures of other people. What is the best way to find NerdFunnel? Oh, you can Born find NerdFunnel.com. And Instagram. You can search us on Instagram for NerdFunnel, and you can also tweet us at NerdFunnel. But until you can do all that, why don't you listen to us? Or talk, go on to Pornhub.com. Or listen to us while watching porn. There's no better way to maintain your erection than listening to NerdFunnel. Hey, Nerd Funnelers, we're back. You're listening to Nerd Funnel, where we take all the nerd news of the world and funnel it into your more than willing ear holes. I'm Bob Shway, and with me tonight is Steven. Closing time. <laughs> Every <laughs> new beginning <laughs> comes from some other beginnings and... Wow, that was way off key, but still awesome cool. song. Yeah. Um, and Fong, how you doing? City, come alive. What yeah. is that? It's Prince. It's Prince. I'm not a Prince, Prince guy. Oh my! What do you mean you're not a Prince guy? Wait, you're not human? I, you know what? I'm just I, Prince is one of those musicians that like I understand why everybody likes him. It's just <sighs> not my thing. You know what? Unpopular opinion, like yeah, but we neither. Hashtag like, Steven oh has an unpopular God. opinion. Start yeah. dr- start drinking early, fun. Wait, Steven's what, got an unpopular opinion. What do you, like, how do you feel bat. about the Beastie Boys? I like the Beastie Boys. Okay. I do like the Beastie Boys. Okay. I, I, I mean, I, I think that I just wasn't exposed to as much Prince and Bowie, so it just didn't do as much for me. Okay. I mean, I guess I wasn't either, but they're, they're musicians I actively sought out. Mm. I mean, like, super sexually repressed, like, Asian family. So that's so my mom wasn't like, let's listen to Prince. Yeah, I could, I could understand that. I... I like like the stuff I've heard from Prince. I enjoy, but I like I don't own a single Prince album. Mm-hmm. Like I know Doves Cry and I know Raspberry Beret and you know I know all the staples of the Prince catalog. Yeah. yeah, I I know and honestly, like I know more about Prince than I do Bowie. Like I'm I don't think I know that many Bowie st- songs. Oh really? I know I know a lot. Of, well, I I know a lot of Bowie and a lot of Prince because I studied them as musicians when I started playing rock guitar in middle school. Oh, oh really? Okay. Yeah. So I mean. Um, my dad's a lifelong musician. As soon as I could hold a guitar, he's teach me how to play golden oldies and jazz and Latin and blues, oh, like damn. the basics and stuff. Um, so I grew up with like the old stuff, like fifties and sixties stuff, like Neil Sedaka and Lou, um, uh, a lot of the old standards and stuff like that. Um, all the old jazz things. and Lou Vega, <laughs> <laughs> Mambo Number Five was Mambo jam. Number Five. <laughs> but then when I started like diverging, growing up, and started getting, you know you know, into rock and roll and like more modern stuff. And yeah. Right. Like, uh, man, Bowie and Prince were there for me in middle school. Uh, yeah. I, I Prince, just... Prince soundtracked, uh, a lot of my first, uh, Batman. Good times. He soundtracked a lot of Batman 89. Oh, that's true. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what people say. That was an amazing album. Well, you have to just cut, look at it as not a Batman album. Though. What was the, what was the song, um, that he did for Batman? The first one. Bat dance, bat dance, bat dance. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> he was, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I've, I've... Got, to, got, got to always remember Jack Nicholson gyrating to that one on the street on that yeah. float thing. Yeah, it, there was, there was a lot of music from those guys that, like, I can respect and understand why people like, but it, I just, it's not my music. It's not, it's not something that I, I grew up listening to, so it doesn't, it doesn't occur to me as something that, like, I would be like, oh, like when, when we found out or we heard. That they died. I was like, oh, that sucks. Like, we're yeah. deprived of two cool artists, but yeah. it's not anything that, like, personally hit me. Like, people were, like, fucking crying in the streets, ready to riot or rampage. Okay. It got me got me a little... Did it? It yeah, got it you? Yeah, me a little bit. Well, also, David Bowie was, like, uh, Labyrinth and The Hunger. He was oh, also a movie yeah, star. Labyrinth. 
Um, yeah, Labyrinth. So, See, I knew him way more from Labyrinth. Oh, you mean the Labyrinth where he co-starred star, the movie starring his dick? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the really inappropriate, like, I, I understand why Jennifer Conley was terrified of the Goblin King. It's because it looks like he's trying to bust out of his pants and right? attack her with his massive cock. <laughs> and, it, and then it's creepier because she was like 16, 17 at the time they filmed it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, it's even creepier because he stole her little brother. Like, Ooh. of course I would be terrified for my little brother <laughs> who got stolen by this guy with a massive erection. <laughs> Did you guys ever see The Hunger? David Bowie in The Hunger? No. No, he played a, a vampire with Catherine Deneuve. And um, it was very, like, 80s, like, kitschy, um, uh, goth kind of movie. Um, it, Susan Sarandon was in it. It was Susan Sarandon, yeah. Catherine Deneuve, David Bowie, um, and uh, they. Oh, it was good. It was a good movie. I very think I'm, I'm more familiar. Vampire chic. I'm more familiar with his role in... Uh, Last Temptation of Christ. Okay, yeah. he's a uh, Pontius Pilate in that one. So, yeah. I mean, he was is he was he he did a lot of cool stuff, but it's just it's it, he popped up it in, he popped up in interesting places. Like he was Nikola Tesla in the Prestige. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that, that was, was really uh, cool. That was a that was a weird role for him. And so. of course, his all time glory moment, uh, Zoolander as himself. Oh right, yeah. Right. <laughs> oh man, that was great. So, um, speaking of Batman, I want to talk a little bit tonight about characters. Um, we're kind of uh, in between gigantic movie releases right now. Um, right. We're on the heels of March, Batman vs. Superman. We're on the heels of Captain America Civil War just released. Uh, we're upcoming going to be having uh, X-Men Apocalypse and Suicide Squad. So we have all these like huge IPs um, telling stories on the big screen that a lot of them have been drawn from uh, comics and stories that have been told before. Like um, the the spoilers de- the death of superman in batman vs superman uh you know is reminiscent of the um death of superman doomsday and dawn uh, of justice is pretty similar to dark knight returns in yeah, a lot of aspects so very true and then of course marvel's uh, civil war a uh, huge comic book arc uh, a story we've already been told now shown on the screen we're getting x-men apocalypse a lot of that line have already it's already been seen in comics and mm-hmm. So they're, just, they're adapting. They're adapting stories we've already seen to the screen, in albeit new and interesting ways, visually yeah. stunning ways, but they're still familiar stories. So, And then we'll have Suicide, Su- 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 Suicide Squad better. coming up as well. And um, we'll have Doctor Strange, and we're going to get stories, but they're gonna, probably going to be stories that we've already seen in the comics. Right. Um, so I was kind of wondering, and I was kind of thinking today about – what kind of stories we want to see our favorite characters partake in that we haven't seen yet? Like let's, let's just have a fun in a, in our, in a a break between our reviews and critiques of these massive IP uh, uh, releases of movies. Let's have a little fun and talk about what do we want to see our, our favorite characters do in comics and movies in games and whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and take the realm to start with Batman. And I'm normally not a huge Batman person. Steven, okay. You're more yeah, I know. I was about person. to say, this is interesting. You're you're taking up Batman. But I got a great idea for uh, a Batman. And maybe I think it was more along the lines of seeing it played out as more of a video game. Okay. Uh, story uh-huh. where um, in my case. Okay, so I love Batman as um, a strategist and a detective more right. than like. And, you know, his world's greatest detective. So I'm trying to think like, about that kind of. That kind of root as a strategist, and so I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we took some of like like uh, Arkham City, the gameplay? You know, it's very action character action gamey, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And we also incorporated some real time strategy elements to Batman. And I'm thinking, well, how could we do that? What would be a good story for that? And here's my story. So, um, uh, the Riddler hacks Oracle somehow, right? Gets all of Batman's information, finds out everything about. He hacks him. wait Oracle like Barbara Gordon. Yeah. So yeah, like Whoa. gets Barbara Gordon stuff. Okay. So the Riddler is somehow, you know, I mean, this is just generic plot that I don't know, like all the fill in the blanks. And you're more of a Batman expert than I am, so we can kind of throw it. Yeah, down. we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, managed to find out, uh, gain access to all of Bat- uh, Batman's knowledge about all of his gizmos and gadgets and mm-hmm. his and and Wayne Manor and Wayne Tech and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, uh, lures Batman to maybe, but doesn't know his identity. No, 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 knows his identity. Oh, okay. So Riddler knows. Riddler everything. knows. Yeah. You know that's a that's a theory, right? That Riddler has always known Batman's identity. 
Well, this thing is no fun for Riddler if if he doesn't have Batman as a as an as a as an right. Adversary. He needs to prove he's smarter than yeah. Batman yeah. before he destroys him. Exactly. So, in keeping with that, um, the uh, he pairs with maybe another uh, Arkham villain and uh, lures Batman, and he start off in Arkham Asylum, and he uh, he's lured Batman in there with the pro- like he shows he's he's kidnapped Barbara Gordon. And they're in Arkham Asylum, so he goes in there to rescue her, uh-huh. and he traps Batman in, in a nefarious trap of some sort. And so he's imprisoned Batman and taken away all his gear. So yeah, he's basically just Batman with no belt, no nothing, just right. just raw Batman, right? And so Batman has to escape Arkham, all right. And then so here's the thing: uh, Riddler has decided that he is going to destroy everything. The Batman, he's going to go to Wayne Manor and the Batcave. And destroy it, and destroy Alfred as, as while there. Batman's trapped in. While Batman's trapped there, so he's leading an assault. He's found out where the Batcave is. He's found out how to access it, disarm all the traps, everything. Right. So um, it's a kind of like a race against time thing. Batman has to escape Arkham City before. Uh, let's say that uh, the Riddler has um, is not moving there himself, but sends like an army of goons. Thugs, maybe, mm-hmm. uh, uh, maybe like Killer Croc or or somebody, right? Like the other yeah. Rogues Gallery, yeah, some yeah, of the yeah. Rogues Gallery along there, right? So as Batman's escaping Arkham Asylum and recovering his gadgets and gizmos and using the brute force, the um, the uh, kind of uh, character action gamey elements to it, mm-hmm. he gets in contact with Alfred, and then through Alfred, you have to RTS building up the defenses of. Wait, so you're talking about this as a game? As a game, okay. So you have to build up the defenses of uh, Wayne Manor. So you have to start deploying strategically tactical traps, like turn Wayne Manor into a fortress and protect the Batcave at all costs. Because like tower there. defense game, kind yeah, of? kind of like tower oh, defense, game, like cool. RTS strategy. And so you're working two ends. You have a character action game escaping right our Arkham Arkham Asylum, like a stealth, like a like a stealth action, yeah, kind like of game. a stealth action game. Because he's got no none of his stuff, right? So mm-hmm. he's got to really stealth it up, and then as you, of course, like. You get your more stuff back, and you can be more a little more aggressive. But all of his gear, all the rest of his gear, is back at Wayne Manor, and he's got Alfred. So Alfred, he gets in contact with Alfred. He gets his communications things back, right? He's like, okay, Alfred, they're coming for you. Right? They're oh, going to nice. destroy everything. Um, Riddler knows everything about Wayne Manor and mm-hmm. the Batcave. He knows everything we've got. So we need to plan out what he doesn't see coming. Mm-hmm. So then you set up a like a real time strategy, like you have a grid over Wayne Manor. You start deploying traps and and it, like kind of like a command and conquer thing, where you have to like use resources of the Batcave to kind of build really quickly new things. Yeah, that um, the Riddler won't know are there, so that you can defend against the in- incoming onslaught. So then you have like like thug squads coming in, and you kind of defend the Wayne Manor until Batman can get there. And then at the end, you can kind of combine the two up and then the two of them face off in kind of a head to head. And then you have like, like you're doing like the, the Batman action stuff while all the traps that you set up are also kind of assisting you against these waves of enemies. Yeah. But you're, that's a Wayne Manor. So you're defending out right. Al- using Alfred to defend Wayne Manor and the Batcave. And you have like the, the, you have, um, uh, the bat plane or uh, the bat wing and the, the batmobile and all his tech over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he can use that to defend as well. And you can put up like tower defenses or turrets or something like that. You know, whatever. See, what I would think would be kind of cool is if he, if in that same idea, instead of like he's just trapped in Arkham, what it is is that he has to advance through the different wings of Arkham. Okay. So it almost becomes like a, kind of like a tower of death type of thing where like yeah. he has to like seal off each individual wing of Arkham as he goes and then that like that would give natural break points in the axe of like you seal off the West Wing and then you transfer back to yeah. Okay, you yeah. Know, Wayne Manor. Oh, so a, like Judge Dredd or like Yeah, like the like Raid. Dredd where it's like he's ascending a tower. Oh, that's that would really be cool. cool. Yeah, that's like, awesome. That would be the idea. And then like at the top of the tower like he's he, and he can't leave there and the the it would be like essentially a save the princess type of fetch quest where like he has to save Barbara Gordon before he can leave Arkham to yeah, go back he has to gotta, defend. Yeah, he's got to get her out of there. Like he's got to get there and then he's got to erase all the data that that uh that uh the, the Riddler, Riddler has on him. Yeah. So he can protect his identity. So it's all about just ascending this tower to save Barbara and destroy the data yeah. before he can go back and actually like defend it. Yeah. I was thinking of calling it Arkham Nightmare. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. 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 That that would be awesome. It's all. It's kind of. Did you ever read uh, Arkham Asylum, the Grant Morrison graphic novel? No, I didn't read uh, that one. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's essentially like 
it is the same kind of idea. It's that the Joker has taken over Arkham Asylum and he says that he's going to kill all of the workers there unless Batman just enters the asylum. Okay. And uh, Batman gets lured in and just has to deal with all of like kind of the rogues gallery. But it's it's done in this very dreamy kind of not not really like actiony kind of way. It's it's that he's super ineffectual throughout the entire thing. Yeah. Where it's more about him kind of like observing these people and kind of like hiding from them yeah. versus actually like confronting like all of these villains and stuff because he knows he's overpowered in Arkham Asylum. Yeah. Gotcha. And it's it's like a, a very Alice in Wonderland mm-hmm. where the Joker's kind of touring him through the asylum. It's very creepy and weird. It's it's huh. it's a great it's a great book to read if you if you guys haven't read it yet. It's, Grant Morrison? Yeah, Grant Morrison. It's his first major work on the Batman title. Okay. Um so I mean I believe it's from the 80s I want to okay. say. Okay. It's it's awesome. It's really dope. Another cool Batman story that I guess could either work as a movie or video game is um oh my god, I was going to say something. <laughs> oh, was it roughly? Brain farted. Ah, uh, yeah. I I was like, okay, don't fucking forget this. <laughs> but also don't interrupt cuz people are talking right now. This is fucking rude. Um yeah, no. Fuck it. Oh, uh, okay. Well, maybe it'll come back to you if you don't think about it too much. Yeah. But what, what do you think? You think it's a good, idea, a decent idea, a decent plot? I think that the like the idea of it could work. It w- I mean, you would have to figure out like there. You could also incorporate action elements outside of, um, outside of the asylum where like you're controlling one of the Robins, you're controlling Nightwing or like, yeah. Tim Drake, Robin or Damien, and they. Like they're going around the city collecting other data that helps Batman or like allows upgrades oh, that'd be to cool. uh, allows upgrades to Wayne Manor or is able to like give him drone drops into oh, the would... asylum for like extra equipment or whatever. That would like, be, that would be cool. kind of neat too. Yeah. So then you kind of have like an indoor outdoor kind of element to it. I definitely agree. That's super awesome. Right. Good, oh yeah. yeah. So um, have you read the um, Neil Gaiman Batman story where it was like. Um, Alfred was like was played like the major villains in his life while he was being a vigilante. No, I didn't like read... to help him get over the death of his parents. Oh no, I didn't read that. Yeah, one. Yeah, like I think that would be like a cool, also very fucked up movie. They might gain a lot of ire from fans, mm-hmm. whatever production company right. decides to do that, because it's like that's not Batman. No, it's uh. It's a take on Batman. That was yeah. that was his way of, of dealing of helping of helping Bruce deal with the uh, yeah. the loss of his family. Is that have like, you read yeah. that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah he's really the good. Joker and he's the Riddler yeah. and stuff. Okay. Yeah, he's he he's basically created this fiction for Bruce to live in. So that way Bruce can kind of deal with his own trauma yeah. through Alfred. Yeah, he I says think. like, you know, Bruce does legitimately take down like petty criminals and shit every once in a while right. that are not him but, but there's like, no super criminals yeah okay like the super the idea of a super criminal is complete bullshit is kind of what it ends up being yeah. oh wow and it goes into like he used to be like really good at drama and stuff like he used to study it seriously so he has access to all this makeup and he's a really good actor huh yeah i like it it's an interesting take on it's an interesting take on it it's kind of for sure um, it's along the same lines of like. It sounds very Neil Gaiman, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's alternative universe kind of stuff, like yeah. Uh, and Definitely. I like it. Like I, yeah. I think that like having having those kinds of takes on a character add a lot of depth and dimension to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, did you ever read like any of the Earth one, Earth Two stuff? Earth One. Yeah. The, the one it's like kind of the more serious takes or the more like grounded takes on characters. They did one about. Superman and Batman. Oh, okay. Where basically it's like Batman is like uh, he he's not great at being Batman just yet. Like, right. His gadgets fuck up and like he like he gets hit and then like there's actual damage done to him. It's not like this kind of superhero Batman. It's like a very yeah. grounded take on it. Um, and even the Superman one is Batman like, version point point oh or yeah, exactly. point zero one. Yeah, yeah beta, Batman beta beta yeah. release Batman beta. It's really good though. It's really well done. Um. And like like the, uh, I think it's the penguin in the first because they're all done. They're not individual issues. They're done as like solid graphic novel standalone pieces. Yeah. And uh, in the first one, I believe that like 
Cobblepot, uh, the penguin, is the mayor of Gotham. Oh, so shit. it's like kind of dealing with the corruption. It's more yeah. instead of being a gangster, he's more of like a corrupt politician. Okay, I like that. Um, and Harvey, and it's Harvey Dent is a character in it, but he's not. It, it, he's actually one of two twins. Uh huh. It's him and his sister. His oh. sister's nice, and he's a dick. Okay, so like, that's cool. Yeah, like, I so like they, that. They kind of twist a lot of those things and play off those ideas. It's really neat, though. I I, and I think that like having those types of creative outlets is like not any different than the what they do in the movies where they kind of like borrow elements that yeah. we're all familiar with and like exactly. you yeah. see them on screen. So um I don't know where I was going with that, but well, I think that that's that's an important aspect to getting multi-dimensions out of a character. Do you have a character that you've always wanted to see something done like a story that you've wanted to see done? I'm sorry I kind of stepped on your 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 Batman Thunder, but no, I really wanted fun. to like I yeah, wanted no, that's to, a good lead. I, I want I, I wanted to put myself into a, a a position where I was dealing with a character that I'm not as familiar with. I wanted to step yeah. out of my comfort zone because right. I have a Superman one like ready to go. Oh, what's yeah. your Superman one? No, l- 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 you wanna... no, no, just go. Let's okay, just go. so my Superman one is that um, Mister Mixy Pitlick, the magic guy, the magic yeah, yeah, yeah. D- little the imp, imp camp. dude, okay. and Toy Man team up. And um, they Toy Man, the guy who creates fucking toys, gigantic machines. Yeah. And so, um, Toy Man has gotten a, a hold of a bunch of different kryptonite. Okay. And uh, Mister Mixy Pitlick, mix the mix Pitlick, has um, captured all of the Justice League. Okay. Okay. And um, so he's trapped. This is the character who the only way you can defeat him is by getting him to say his own name backwards, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, basically. What's his name backwards? If, I, 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 just, him or... I just needed a magic caveat. So I needed I, I needed a way for Superman to be removed. Uh, so they're... they're um, Why can you pick up a cooler villain like Black Adam or something? Well, Black Adam's cool. We can do that. I this mean, is cooler I, than a fucking intergalactic imp wearing a purple suit. I mean, this is a character who was once <laughs> voiced by Gilbert fucking Godfrey. Godfrey. Oh, wow. Well, the, the villain's not important. It's the situation that's important. Okay. So the Justice, <laughs> the Justice League is captured. Okay. And they're all Im- imprisoned, and they're each... Uh, Toy Man's got these gigantic kryptonite-powered robots, each of which um, the Batman goes up against them and says... Uh, he goes up... or I'm sorry, Superman goes up um, and fights them, and he's like, you can go ahead and fight them, but if you destroy them, the kryptonite's going to rob you of one of your powers. Oh. And so, like, for... So, and he, they're all the... Um, the Just League is, is captured, and they're, like, going to get killed. Mm-hmm. So... Okay. Um, and then they 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 go up against uh so Superman like for instance goes up and has to save uh Hal Hal Jordan okay from this uh this device this kryptonite powered device and so Superman just like he's like oh yeah he, like this is no problem like you know one two punches Toy Man you know Toy Man like oh I'm, he's not like the biggest most de- de- deceitful villain the most powerful villain but the kryptonite when he saves Hal Jordan. Uh, robs him. So each 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 uh, Justice League member he they, he saves takes away one of his powers. Oh. So so the Kryptonite uh, robs him like of one of the powers that he uh, that he's got each time he saves. Like permanently, just, like it's yeah, just permanently. Just, wow, like, undoes his power. So he, does he know which what power belongs to who? No, he just but he but he he knows. He's like, he's like go ahead and save him, defeat him. I know you can. He's like, but will you? Knowing that you're gonna lose your powers, like you, you're not gonna be able to devo- to, to defeat that. Like you can save these people. Yeah, but you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose your power. So Superman's got to decide. So he goes up and he he just defeats one of them. Um, well, let's say uh, he fights. Um, uh, he fights a robot and saves Martian Manhunter and then loses his heat vision. Yeah, Ooh, and, or then save Martian man, fucking Manhunter. Or then he, he he goes and fights. Uh, he saves Flash and loses his super speed. He goes up and and or, uh, fight, uh, fights to save Wonder Woman and loses uh, his strength. But he, as he progressively saves them, doesn't he also like gain them as an ally? No, no, they're they're gone. They're they're removed. That's no, well, no, but I mean, like, if he saves Martian Manhunter, won't Martian Manhunter be able to help him now? Yeah, they, they can help, but he they have to go save the Justice League members, and if <laughs> right, but like then the key is just fucking save Batman, and he's got a plan to defeat everybody, <laughs> and then just let Batman do whatever the fuck Batman does. So, <laughs> well, that's that, that's one of the things I need help with is because like the the that's why I need the magic caveat is that, that it's like a a prison version of metropolis and so once they're taken they're saved they're taken out of the prison version of metropolis like oh and okay. then enclosed metropolis gotcha. so um, they're teleported back to the regular te- world teleported back to the regular world so um superman has I to still say batman figures a way out how to how to how to save him so, and and give superman well, back his powers so right. so here's the thing so we're we're he's losing powers and he keeps fighting and the fights are getting harder and harder 
and he keeps fighting to save them, even though he knows he's going to keep losing powers. And, and eventually, by the end, he's just a man. So the last one he saves is Batman, and then he loses all his super senses. Okay. Um, like he has no hearing, the hearing, the vision. If he loses his super senses, does he? Do you mean like he's just back to regular human, or do you mean like he's like now he can't see, like he's blind and he's dead? No, no, just like yeah. all his super super senses. I think it'd be even more powerful of a statement if like he gets stripped down to like below human, like typical human senses of like now he's oh, just, blind like, disabled? and deaf. That's, like, that's yeah, not a like, bad he's... idea. That's not a bad idea at like, all. Like yeah, Superman is cool. now like kind of super crippled yeah. or whatever, you know, like he's, he's yeah. super impaired. So now, so now that he saves everybody and now that he's completely devoid of all his powers, um, he is, they're like a uh, mixture, Mr. Whoever the villain is, is like, okay, well, how do I keep Superman from like down permanently? Like, even though he's his willpower is still there. Like, how do I defeat his will? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So then they trap him in a reality where he gets to relive, uh, live on Krypton as just a normal dude, like he's become. He's fought all this way and become normal. Yeah. And now he's like, okay, well now you get to live on, uh, live out in a vision of Krypton as a normal guy, and you have a family, you can have everything like that. But here's the catch is that in order to torture Superman because they're villains, he gets to live on Krypton, but he's living in the last days of Krypton before it explodes. So he has to relive relive the end of Krypton over and over again. Oh, uh, man. So um, – and then here's the thing. It's like, well, how – zone Yeah. So then Shitty how, groundhog. So then how, does, then how does he get out of it, right? So how do we how do we get out of it? So yeah. he needs to be able to summon the willpower to, to break this, this kind of mind control, whatever is going on. Mm-hmm. But how does he get the willpower to do that? So without these powers, he now he's in this reality where he has never known any powers, right? So um, he's going through, and I'm trying. I was trying to think of like like ground like you said Groundhog Day. Like, is every iteration a little different? Does he change things each time he goes through? Yeah. And I was thinking about maybe that could be the case. And then one time he has he's trying to save people and he keeps failing and he keeps uh, keeps giving up. And then I was thinking maybe one time he has like a a, a wife or a son or something like that where. Um, he tries to save the son or the wife or something like that and and fails. Yeah. And then um, – but then he, co- he comes back and relives it again. But eventually he comes to the point where he just stops trying. And when he stops trying, the look of disgust and disrespect and heartbrokenness on his wife and or son is what shocks him back into having the willpower. It's like that's what oh, he needs okay. to. Oh, wow. And then um, that brings him back – that brings him back to – um the uh the real world but he's still powerless in the real world and then um hopefully batman's figured out a way to save <laughs> <laughs> essentially we need batman yeah, to we need batman. fix whatever the fuck happened bat well, mcguffin bat yeah. mcguffin well i'm assuming Deus he, ex bat mica <laughs> they would assume all the i would assume that he gathered all the pieces of the kryptonite and figured out a way to reverse engineer some shit and then well, that's kind of a cool idea i would actually say that it might even be more interesting if you do the, if that was written as like the last superman story yeah like the death of superman is that like Eventually, he saves everybody, but now he's, like, a vegetable. Yeah. And, like, that's, like, the last Superman Jesus, story. Jesus, okay. That's depressing as all hell. Wow. Well, yeah, but, like, how, how great of a... I mean... Well, what, what, if, what if he comes out of it, and they comes, he comes out, and then he's gone... He's given everything he has to save these people, and then he comes out, and then they can't give him his powers back. There's no way. Right. So, he, it's he like, is. he's like, I've given everything for you guys, and I've saved your asses a bunch of times, and I've finally given everything to save you, and you guys can't save me. Right. But well, but I mean that's if I mean if he were shitty about it, then that's that's not really nice. That's not really a true hero if you assume that he would get saved. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean the true hero's thing is like, well, I, I the sacrifice was worth it. That yeah. would be his yeah his story arc. But also he has to live with it now. Like he'll he'll accept the responsibility of that and like come to terms with it. But it's hard. It's like you know yeah. I was a superpower being my whole life, and now I've got I have to go. Not only do I have to go back to a normal life, but I have a, norm- a normal life not on Krypton that I've just been reliving for for God knows how long in my mind. Right. right. So that could be rough. So that's that 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 was kind of the story okay. I was playing All with. All right. That. Yeah. Yeah. I I dig it. I could I could get with that. Yeah. It actually bleeds a little bit into since we brought up the topic uh-huh. uh, we, earlier tonight when you mentioned the topic. I it it occurred to me that there was a story in my head that has been I've been kicking around for a while and okay. I, I thought it was kind of interesting. And you guys let me know what you think or add whatever you think might be interesting to it. Uh-huh. But um the story I was thinking I, I have a couple 
and they all kind of follow the same theme. So involving different characters or the same character, uh, different characters, okay. different characters. But like, I'll by the end you'll kind of recognize the theme that I've. I kind of like, and it's present in most of my writing and the things that kind of capture my imagination. Yeah. So let's see if you can figure it out. The first one is uh, about Captain America. Okay. Yeah. And it's about the idea that Captain America, eventually the super soldier serum starts wearing off. And it's a whole story. It, it, I don't know if it would be a comic or a movie. I don't think you could do it in a movie. It'd be too fucking depressing to do it in a movie. <laughs> so like in a comic. Um but, like, you do the, the story of his powers wear off. And so not only is he not super strong anymore, but per, he degenerates very quickly. Oh, because man. Because now he's... Aging like, like he should be. He's, like, 100 years old at this point. Yeah. Not even aging yeah. the way he should be. He's aging at an accelerated rate. Oh, crap. So then the story is about dealing with how Captain America gets old and gets dementia. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, that's lame. And so, like, he he has to go to, like, a nursing home, but he can't go to, like, a regular nursing home because Dr. Doom will crash through the wall and kill him if he's just at a regular nursing home. So he has yeah. to go to, like, this isolated nursing home where he lives alone, and he has, like, one orderly. Oh. And the orderly's name is, like, uh... Bar- oh, my God. It, it, Bucky? <laughs> Don't... I was going to say, it's Barry Buchanan. Okay. But uh... he calls him Bucky. Yeah. Oh. And, like, he can't tell the difference between, like... You know, he thinks that he might still be like. There are moments where he still thinks he's in World War Two, and then there are yeah. moments where he. So does it like flash back to stories of him like his good old days? It well, what I was thinking is that it would flash back, and you would see like you would have action scenes, and he's like fighting and doing all this cool shit, and then you kind of realize th- throughout the course of the story, like you assume that it's kind of like him having flashbacks, and then at a certain point, like the whole the whole first couple issues would just be like. You see the old man Steve Rogers, so you kind of understand what's happening. Yeah. And then you catch these flashbacks of, like, you know, this is him, like, in World War Two, you know, punching Hitler in the face. And yeah. Then like, and then, you know, more of, like, kind of his day-to-day trouble of, like, being an old man. And then you get, like, a flash of him, like, you know, fighting Doctor Doom or, you know, forming the Avengers or Avengers Assemble, big splash pages. Yeah. And, like, you go through, like, the entire Captain America story, like, all of, like, the big beats in yeah. America. You do Civil War, you do everything. Yeah. Like him coming out of the ice, him coming back from the dead, like all this shit. Yeah. And then like eventually at a certain point in the story arc it would shift and then you're seeing all of like these same issues from his orderly's perspective. Uh huh. And it's like when he's imagining the um, like that he's like punching the Kaiser it's just like him like having like this kind of like dreamy flashback and like he's like kind of in his bed or whatever and like yeah. just sad Aww. and then like he's like he's when he's like he's like fighting Dr. Doom in his head like it's really just him like holding like I don't know like a tray or a bedpan and like he's like in his head he's there but like he's really not there mm-hmm. and it's like just the most depressing fucking Captain America s- story oh, ever geez. and about like kind of the loss of what it takes what what happens when you can't be the person who you've been or and then and then the question would be ultimately was he ever really captain america or is this just something that's all been concocted in his head oh man oh man that'd be crazy <laughs> also like that's really depressing like how fucked up of a story but like it would be a cool fucking story and, like, yeah like that would sell a billion issues because like who wouldn't want to see like how depressing does it be? Is it to be like an old superhero, or was he ever a superhero, or was he just like this crazy person who had all these dreams? You know, also, you know, what'd be funny is uh, if at the very end the uh, the orderly goes out from his day job and starts fighting crime on the side. Right, <laughs> the orderly becomes the Winter Soldier. Yeah, uh, it would be. I, I, be I just think it'd cool. be an interesting story. Also, if it was like, just how fucking heartbreaking would it be for him to just be like? Why couldn't I age at the appropriate time with right. Peggy instead of now? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. you know, what'd be really cool is if, um, if uh, the orderly starts doubting, is doubting this ever happened, right? Right. And is like, and then eventually somebody comes to visit him when oh. they're when maybe he gets really really sick, and right. at the very end, like somebody comes to to visit him that has still has serum in him, or that right. you know has his, or maybe like the Hulk banner comes, right. or something yeah, like that. Banner. someone that's never gonna die. And comes to pay his last respects, and then 
it was it was like the 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 orderly feels like so shitty for for doubting ever doubting him and then then goes out and becomes right. kind of becomes, a vigilante right and that would be that would be kind of and like something somebody new maybe somebody new like comes out of it like i was going to say i was going to say it was like logan comes cuz i am at, in my in my head i guess the the story takes place after kind of like the super heroic period like in a time when like superheroes aren't necessarily like as commonplace as they are in the Marvel universe. Okay. Yeah. So like like most of the villains have been destroyed at this point and yeah. superheroes aren't really needed anymore. So like it's just some crazy old man. So then you, this orderly isn't really sure who this guy is or why he was important or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. Um but like the, he's still kept somewhat in isolation just in case he has enemies that might yeah, come back. I see. But okay. Logan because he never is going to get old and never is going to die right. just yeah. still roams about and he like shows up and you know, he pops his bone. He pops. He pops his bone. <laughs> <laughs> he pops his claws out, uh, and you know he's doing his whole Logan thing. And then that's when the orderly kind of realizes. Like, I think that would be a. That's cool story. really cool. And then yeah. it's like he's, and then Logan at the end is like the only one there when when finally Steve Rogers lets go and like slips off into that good night. Yeah. And the, like, God, it's such. And then like the last imagery is like. Like uh, oh, the last image is oh, you know I got I got it. It's him uh taking his his claw and carving a star in a little bedpan or whatever he's using, uh, yeah, that and puts cool. it on his chest oh, and see, leaves. Oh, see that was I was gonna say I was gonna say the last image is just like a black panel with like almost like a light shining down of just Logan outlined. Uh, handing like resting a flag on on a bedridden Steve Rogers. Well, that's pretty good too. And it's that's just noble. Like, I, I don't know why it would be like. I don't know why like it occurs to me like this is the most depressing story about Captain America I could think of, and like this <laughs> is the story that would capture because it would really like. I would be very interested to read that story of like how an old person deals with that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's not something that we ever deal with in like in in comics or in media of like. What happens after the credits of these movies, or what happens? Right. Yeah, that's true. You know, like someone's still trying to explain the internet to Steve. Right. <laughs> that's what I imagine happens, like in between the Avengers movies. Right, like he's trying to understand how the internet works. He's what like, is What's this? A meme? It's a coffee maker. Right. It's like language. Well, and it's 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 the ideal the idea of yourself versus the reality of yourself too, because like now he's you know. He can't be Captain America. He can't anymore. be Captain America anymore. Right. So he's had this ideal, his identity, and it's all slipping away from him. Right. And, and, it's, and in a way, it's kind of interesting, like how that kind of parallels like real America, like the good old days. You know, were they ever really that good versus what right. we are now? Right. So mm-hmm. it works on a lot of levels. I yeah. like it. Yeah, I think it'd be a cool story, and I think it would. I mean, and then you have like, I mean, you could you could even run it like you know six eight issues of just like you know the first four like kind of more straightforward, and like you're kind of seeing these you know, these flashes of the story. And then like a lot of it is just the, mainly it would just be day to day life of like how this guy deals with this. Yeah. You know, and like, does he even know like how lucid is he? And you know, kind of just making a very unreliable narrator. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, and it Dude, was, that's a really fucking genius idea. It, it's a really kind of cool idea. It, I would totally help you write it. If, if we didn't if get I, sued. If we didn't get sued <laughs> right. Then. We could totally write it. Yeah. Right, okay, right. we'll just make Captain America then. Captain America. <laughs> or Captain America. Uh-oh. Bobby blown up. It's uh anyway, um the uh the the idea of it I like, especially since the, the old man Logan we're getting the old man Logan right movie coming out soon. Let's talk about that for a second. It's it's gonna be rated R. They're or, gonna rate they're making so rated are R. Are they actually gonna do Old Man Logan though? It's gonna be based on the Old Man Logan story. It's gonna be okay. rated R. But so much of Old Man Logan's tied into the rest of the Marvel universe. Like Old Man Logan is not just an X Men story. It's like um everybody's story, kind of. Yeah. Um I mean you read Old Man Logan? No, I haven't. Oh, it's it's pretty fucking genius. I I have a okay. of it. You need to fucking take it home. But um it's fucking great. And a lot of it ties into not just the rest of the X Men, but like actually the X Men as a whole don't really play that big of a part in it. It's oh, kind yeah? of a road oh. story. It's about like Hawkeye is like his traveling buddy who's now blind, by the way, which is, is interesting. It, it, it's along the, the theme of what we've been talking about now, just right. taking shit away from everybody, right? Exactly. And so deprivation of senses. Yeah, it, and it's 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 about him, like Logan, kind of overcoming and understanding who he really is. In a world where the villains have essentially won, yeah, um, and and I I don't know if they can do it without the rest of the Marvel universe. I, I'm interested to see it. I mean, I mean, 
it's gonna be. It sounds like it's gonna be Hugh Jackman's final hurrah. Yeah. Well, he's been he's been Wolverine for seventeen years now, so or sixteen years. Has it been? Wow. Two, oh. X Men was two thousand. Oh wow. Yep. It was X Men and Spider Man that started this whole movie cinematic universe kick, and uh, he was on board from the very beginning. And you know what's crazy? If you look at him back then, and you look at him now, he looks better and more jacked in. The latest and X Men. Um, yeah, he looks huge. Uh, um, in, in the Wolverine than he does in X Men, the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's he ridiculous. Looks gigantic. Um, man, Hugh Jackman. Well, that's that's kind of like uh, uh, Downey. Like, oh RDJ yeah, yeah. Looks like by uh, Captain America, he's way more yoked than he was in the first Iron. Man. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Like he was never fat, but like I I, I wouldn't say he's like paunchy or anything. But he's yeah, like, he's definitely got a little more weight on him. He's not like you know yeah. yoked out superstar that he is now. Yeah. Which is... Well, it, it makes sense in the context of the movie too, because I mean he was uh, in pri- he was a, a billionaire alcoholic playboy who was in prison, right. so he's not gonna have a yoked out body. But then he steps up and starts being an Avenger, and then he's gonna start training. Yeah. Right. Also. So in his personal life, I think he got like super hardcore into Wing Chun. Oh, oh yeah, like in, yeah. In the real RDJ life, the yeah, real, yeah, the real RDJ. <laughs> like there was like this really awesome photo on set of like him and Tom Hiddleston kind of dicking around and play fighting, and then like Hiddleston's got his uh got his fists up. And he takes a stance. Oh, really? nice. Yeah, he takes a legit kung fu stance. Interesting. And it was just like, well, that is probably the photo that happened right before Tom Hiddleston died. Uh, oh, speaking of Tom Hiddleston, just a quick detour side plug. Yeah. The night manager on AMC, Tom Hiddleston and Hugh Laurie. Ama- they, they made that into a show. Amazing show. Amazing is show. Is it really that oh, okay. good? It's halfway through. It's a miniseries. Halfway through. I want to talk about it a whole bunch and do a review on it when we're done. Okay, okay when, for when, sure. when, it, when it's done, when the show's run, because it's halfway through, but it's captivating. It's great. You would really? lo- you would love it. Nicole would love it. Everybody would love it's it. It's just fucked up. It's 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 diabolical. It's great. Wow. Okay. Um, Fong, then, what about you? Do you have a character that you want to see? You were talking about Har- Harley Quinn earlier. Yeah, and then I, I I also like remembered another ridiculous idea as well. But throw it down Har- Harley Quinn. Um, I just like her origin story. I remember watching as a kid. It was heartbreaking. Like mm. when you see like the Joker manipulate her and then you see her like recover from it and then realize like he's an asshole. And then there was that one very iconic scene um, at the end of the episode where like you know, she she sets off an alarm because they forgot to take an anti theft tag off of something she bought. Right. And she's just like, no, I'm, I didn't steal anything and blah, 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 blah. And like the security guards just trying to help her and she, and it just triggers this downward spiral. Like, I think that would be a really cool movie. Uh, it seems like they're going to do a little bit of the Mad Love storyline. And are they? Uh, it seems like it. Cause, in Suicide Squad? Yeah. yeah. Cause they, they have, they show her in like the lab coat and then they, do, oh, there's okay. kind of the scene where her and the Joker, the Joker is uh, in a straight jacket and sitting across the table from her when she's all done up. Oh. Uh, so they're going to do a little bit of Mad Love. That so would be cool. I would love to see a Harley Quinn standalone movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. I think that's the, I think out of Suicide Squad, that's going to be the minimum that comes out of that movie is we're going to get a Harley Quinn. I hope one. so. So when you, when you talk about origins for Harley Quinn, like do you, I, I, cause what I, what interests me about Harley Quinn is like the towering intellect that is just undermined by, such a diabolical, manipulative mind. Oh, I know. And seeing that process play out, kind of like, uh, kind of, I almost want to say, like, if, if it was to be a movie, it would kind of be like a Silence of the Lambs type thing. Yeah. Like a Hannibal Lecter and, uh, what's her name? Jody, yeah. Jodie Foster thing. And then oh. you consider, like, how fucking smart she is, and she was still manipulated by this guy. Like, it just adds to how terrifying the mm-hmm. Joker is. Well, and also an interesting Part of her origin story might be that she builds up this towering intellect in school and psychology stuff to perhaps to hide or hide uh, her own psychoses. Her, her own oh, psychoses, like maybe she's unbalanced from the very from very young. We, we get an opening scene where like something traumatic happens to her and she buries it by being OCD with studying and knowledge and yeah. all stuff like that. And so it gets buried under so many layers of intellect and discipline, and then. The Joker sees right through that mm-hmm. and is like, okay, I know exactly how to, uh, to like what thread to start pulling. And eventually that whole carpet just going to unwind. That would be pretty fucking and cool. I would, I would anecdotally agree with that because every girl that I've ever known <laughs> that has studied <laughs> psychology is a 
fucking psychopath. Really? <laughs> oh yeah, they're the they're the every girl in college that was a psychology major at least. No offense to our fans who are yeah, psych majors. <laughs> yeah, uh, and this is completely anecdotal. <laughs> yeah, but from the two girls who I lived with who were both psych majors. Okay. And a girl or two I may have dated that were a psych major. I would say that they're all fucking sociopathic psych- psychopaths. You know what? Um, I there was a guy that I dated who um, his ex girlfriend, also a psych major, fucking crazy and a fucking but selfish, you... like horribly selfish person. I would I would wow. imagine that part of what draws people into the field of psychology is that there's something fucked up in them and they're trying to understand it better or yeah. justify it. Right. Or yeah. That or too. justify it or prove, prove the normalcy in who they are. Yeah. <laughs> and then as a result, they go into psychology. I so like, it I, draws that type. I, th- I think that a lot of times that it's uh, like there, there is something messed up and there's a huge ego behind it that they yeah. have to use the, institution of psychology to build up kind of like a wall of defense so that they can never be deconstructed themselves they're too afraid to look in on themselves and be right. like okay well, this is what's wrong with me it's, yeah. it's one of those things where like if they have if there's a name for my condition then it means it's okay that yeah. type of that yeah, type just of justification yeah. right uh we're falling into like a funnel of love i know right? <laughs> a funnel of love hole yeah um but no a harley and a, a harley Quinn origin story also would be cool because i would like to see how she gets so good at fighting. Yeah, exactly. Well, she's supposed to be like a gymnast, I think. It, well, yeah. So, yeah, the gymnastics part would be kind of cool to see her develop. Oh, yeah. Like a, a montage of that and like weapons expertise. Like, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, she know. she does just seem to be like good at everything. Mm-hmm. And like that, the handing over of herself to that. I would I, be very interested in seeing the process, the, like the, the point at which she hands herself over. Because like with any psychotic break there's like a handing over it's like okay yeah i'm surrendering control of my own mind to this external ideal of the harley quinn or right. of you know of whatever and so yeah. i just you just hand yourself over and it's it's a it's a liberation because you're freeing yourself from your own control i think that that's kind of like the point of the harley quinn joker love story to me is that it's just this it, it's it's perfectly encapsulates so many ways of like what love is. It's just like it's complete psychosis. Like it's right, just, yeah. You lose yourself completely and in the other person, right? And sometimes in a bad relationship, you become somebody you don't necessarily want to be or should be, right? You know? Um, you go against your better judgment, you do terrible things, or you just end up being not the person that you ever wanted to be. And the other the person place. knows this a lot of times and will revel in it like the Joker. Right. The Joker enjoys it, probably gets off on it. But see, I feel like in, in most relationships, see, again, we're, back, we're <laughs> kind of saying the funnel of love, but that's fine. That's fine. Um, I feel like we we have to understand that like in a lot of ways... Nobody ever sees themselves as the Joker. Nobody right. ever, in no. any relationship that you've ever had that's terrible, almost nobody ever sees themselves as the terrible one. No, no, you, the ego won't let, the ego won't let you. you you're never right. the bad guy. Right. They're always the one who is like, "Oh, I was manipulated by this person or I've learned yeah. from this or whatever." Like yeah. even I mean, even Hitler thought he was probably thought he was a good guy. He didn't think he was like this horrible fucking no, absolutely. Mutant person. No. He felt his like reasons were justified. Yeah, right. it's just it's all about yeah that, that moral justification. I like that I've compared some of my exes to Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's rough. That's rough. Um, Not inaccurate, but rough. So, so now we've all kind of got a story out. We've we've wanted to see. Oh, I have one more. Oh yeah, one more. Yeah, you do you guys one. have more? I, I have I do have one more. Yeah. All right, let's 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 run through them. Go and ahead, see what we got. Okay, so mine's gonna be depressing. So we'll go with yours first. <laughs> or do we want to go with yours first? Is since yours, yours is, is depressing? Is, your, is yours uplifting? Yes. Okay, let's start with yours. Yeah. Okay. Let's end in a high note here. <laughs> okay. So mine is that uh, the idea would be GI Joe. Okay. Okay. Uh, franchise. At least most people are somewhat familiar with. Retaliation was good. I liked Retaliation, Retaliation was, was good. I, I did enjoy Retaliation. I enjoy anything with, that The Rock is in because he always has a good time on screen. The, the Rock is so good in everything. everything. There's no bad. I mean, The Rock is never bad in any movie. He's been in some movies that aren't great. Right. But, but he's, he's never bad, bad yeah. in them. I know. He's he, always having a good time. And you know what the thing about The Rock is? Is that there is probably nobody in your life that you could ever say has a better time or just enjoys their life more than The Rock. I want to play a and d game with The Rock and Vin Diesel. That would be awesome. Wouldn't that be fucking that fun? W- that would be fun. 
I actually have a story about The Rock that I can't talk about on here. Oh, wow. Oh, can we hear it later? Yeah, totally. Okay. Right. It, it well, has to do... Way to blue ball our listeners, Bong. <laughs> good job. I'm if sorry. Good there's story, like some legal it. things. I, I Well, okay. First of all, I want to stress that I did not fuck The Rock and like I was paid off or something. Okay. I mean, that would be cool, but... <laughs> that would be awesome. Okay, but <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, okay, so what's so, your idea? Okay, so the idea would be uh, again. This might be a comic, or I don't know if this would ever work in a movie because it's probably not shooty enough to be in the GI Joe franchise. But the idea would be that uh, eventually the government realizes that GI Joe is a special task force mainly designed to fight Cobra. Yeah, and yet Cobra still exists decades on, so right. they're not doing a good enough job. Right. Yeah. So the government comes and shuts down G.I. Joe. Oh. And it's about what happens to these people after they have lost their jobs and they have nobody to fight anymore. Like, what their home lives are like. Like, as a dude named Shipwreck. Yeah. Or, like, <laughs> as, like the guy who was the, like, snow job. Who <laughs> was a real character who was their alpine expert whose name was Snow Job. That mm-hmm. is a... That is an amazing I had an action, code name. I had an action figure of him. Okay, there yeah. you go. So, so you've gotten a snow like, job before wh- is yeah. what you're saying? I had, I, had a t- I, had a t- I had a tiny plastic snow job. Right. <laughs> it, when you were very young. When I was a little kid. Um, but so like what do, what are these people's home lives like? Snake eyes? Librarian. It, well, like. He can't talk. Yeah, he can't talk. And like, so what What happens to these people once they have nothing left to and do? And like, and you know, we get really real with it and they, they have like. They they ca- they have like all these battle wounds and like all right. these things acting up. They have PTSD. Up. They have PTSD. Yeah. And then like like Scarlet and Duke are together, but like can they hold a relationship together outside of like battle. the battle of combat? Yeah. Like, right. Like where like Duke is now like a janitor. Like he can't. He has yeah. no marketable skills really anymore. So like and nobody wants no like mercenary groups will hire him because mm-hmm. like he's a disgraced soldier at this point. So okay. like. Are they go, all are they all dishonorably discharged? Yeah, or what? like okay. they're they're all dishonorably discharged. Like so, they all have to get like menial work. So like oh, that's so like bad. that's <laughs> so, lame. Like, so like like Scarlet is working in a diner at like the oh. graveyard shift, and Duke is like a janitor, and then they just come home and they. It fight sounds like a, a sitcom. Lot. It sounds like a sitcom, honestly. <laughs> really? See, like you imagine, I imagine it as like like uh kind of just super depressed, like a slice of life, super depressing kind okay. of like. Like they can't like they can't make it work anymore outside okay. of the thrill yeah. of battle. Like yeah. oh like du- like like Duke can't get erections anymore. Like he, <laughs> he, he he like can't get it up anymore because he's like like there's nothing as exciting in life as fighting. So yeah. like now he has to go and like he's like a high school janitor too. So okay. like the fucking kids make fun of him and shit. Like they're like they throw shit at him and they're like they're they talk about how creepy he is. He's like, oh, I'm a fucking depressing. war hero. Yeah. Like, yeah. I stopped, like, the weather machine at one point, and so I fucking shot at Serpentor, and I took a snake in the heart for all you fuckers. Yeah. And, like, at, at the end of the day, like, nobody cares about him. That's sad, and then he man. has to come home, and Scarlet nags him, and, like, she gets harassed by truckers at her, like, You're trucker. right. You do have a running theme with these, <laughs> like, just... Let's just grind these superheroes into, into, into sad, depressing husks of their former Actually, selves. Actually, what, what does... What that does remind me of is kind of what they did with the losers in the A Team. Oh yeah, the losers. Oh yeah, those are both great movies. Like very enjoyable. Yeah, movies. I yeah. I enjoyed both of them. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan in the fucking yeah. Losers oh was god, so good. he was amazing. Like, also, was, uh, Chris Zoe, Evans. Yeah, Chris Evans was great. He was great. Comic relief. Yeah, yeah. he was Zoe awesome. Saldana was good, and uh, the fucking the the dude with the cowboy hat. Oh, Cougar. Yes, I, don't I, know I, I, I saw the A Team. I didn't see the Losers. The Losers is good. Awesome. It's, it's really, really good. It's really enjoyable. Um, a Team is great though. A, I'm I'm really bummed that they didn't do another A Team movie because I I thought it was fun. Yeah, yeah and it did it, it did fun, well, yeah. didn't it? it? Made its money back. It was Bradley Cooper and Liam Neeson and yeah, Quentin Page Jackson. Yeah, and Charlton Copley. It was yeah, it was a good time. Oh yeah, Charlton Copley Charlto wasn't Copley. that um, Dude. hardcore Henry fame. Yeah. Uh, and he's doing it like an American accent. That's crazy. No, I like I like that idea. I just um, I see. The thing, is, <laughs> the, the thing is, like, I have a hard time not envisioning GI Joe as something comedic. Yeah. Okay. So like, I, but that's all I'm saying. Bring the realism to it. I I, I understand. Like, I understand the situation being real, but I feel like it, I I just want to see it as like a sitcom, like 
a friends thing where they like all have to live together now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just I, I see. See, it. like I want I in my in my vision of it, like they can't now, afford to live together. Now, like they all live in shacks. Does the same thing happen to the Cobra team? Does Co- no Cobra, Cobra, Cobra Commander? Or? No, no, no. What ends up happening is the hubris of the U.S. government to disband GI Joe yeah. results in Cobra. Like, like just running reading. amok. Okay, and that then, makes sense. Yeah. And then, and then, I can see that. But and they're like, "Oh, let's reactivate the Joes," but it's too late. It's too late. They've already right. They've already taken over. They're too far. They're too far gone. They've already and, dust bowled themselves into oblivion. Yeah, and, and and basically, like Cobra ends up being smart, and instead of like just coming up with weather machines and shit, they decide to politically infiltrate the governments. Yeah, they buy off all the politicians. And they, they pull eventually... Hydra, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Except there's no Captain America to stop them anymore because they disbanded GI Joe, and so. Uh, they just funnel billions of dollars into their accounts and start like bringing right. down democracies and just, yeah, yeah, exactly. They just do it. They do it through economics. That's They're like, cool. "Fuck all the military. We're just gonna do this through no, pure no more, no more, no more build. Yeah, no more building like crazy <laughs> fantastic yeah, weather, we don't need to weather build control a snake machines into the side of a mountain anymore. Yeah, like, it's fine. <laughs> no more underwater snake bases. Right. Exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah, so and then they end up living in this world, and that's kind of the end of the movie, <laughs> the end of the story in my mind. I love it. Uh, oh, I have a third one. Too. Okay. Well, it, uh, is it is it depressing? Is it also de- come on? You know me. Okay. Okay. Oh, very one. quick. It's a very quick one. <laughs> okay. Uh, the the okay, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Um, okay. You do their adolescent years. Okay. But they are teenagers already. But you do adolescence, like for like, how did they become ninjas? Like you do the story of how they became ninjas. Oh, like oh. the training that right, Splinter the training put them through. Process, but you do it where like it would be what actual like feudal ninja training would be because like Splinter is like from feudal ninja, right? Is, right. His descendant. So it's like it's not like kind and fun and like let's eat pizza. It's like he's like hitting them a lot. Like he's like yeah. smacking Leonardo and like. He like, and the reason why Raphael is so like kind of crusty is that Splinter might have touched him wrong at some point. Whoa! Oh, okay, Cross <laughs> why line. would that happen? He's because, a rat. Like, He's a turtle. Well, because it's gross. in ancient Japanese culture, homosexuality was not looked down on. Oh. Okay, but that doesn't mean That's molestation. Way too gross. Have, you seen, was... have you seen a turtle penis? Do you know what those look like? <laughs> well, they're like gigantic, blossoming alien flowers. Right, and maybe a rat <laughs> is into that. <laughs> Uh, so I got to pass on that one. That's just too weird. <laughs> is it too dark? Is that one too dark? Well, I mean, mean, like you've got this childhood trauma. Like, is he? Is that the why first... there's pizza? He's just trying to eat away the pain. Right. The first, the their first their Ninja pain. Turtle movie was kind of like that, though. Like they went through that. Right. That was kind of like, Sucky. Yeah, that was kind of on that gritty edge. So I could see that be yeah. working, but like, no, no touching. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But it's like Splinter smacking them around a lot. Like he's real unkind. Like, like they, they're like. Like, you do, like, the... They're walking over floorboards, and then you hear, like, a creak. And then, like, like uh, Leonardo is walking over floorboards. Yeah. And then yeah. it creaks. And then spl- you, it, the camera pans up, and Splinter's, like, sitting there and, like, shakes his head. And Leonardo lifts, like, the, the little palm of his foot up. And Splinter has just, like, a... a, a, a a, uh, like a tree branch, yeah, and just like starts whipping the bottom of his feet until they cut open. Steven, and he's just bleeding. Has someone, and... has someone been hitting you? <laughs> is there some, some things you need to tell us about your childhood? No, just, uh, but that's ninja training. Like, if you want to train to be a ninja and silent, like, yeah. you train through pain. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, that is that is ninja training. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind seeing a movie like that. Yeah, or or, or, or a comic book series like that. Like right. a, like a like a four or five part series. Yeah, of, like, that'd be pretty cool. Like, then, like, it could be like a, like a four year training cycle, like a high school thing. Right. Exactly. Except like ninja school. Yeah. And then it's like a lot of like panels of just the turtles crying mm-hmm. and like like asleep oh and like they like hold each other and like Michelangelo was the one that like was never that good so like all the other ones had to take the beating. Okay, maybe that's why Raphael is crappy is that he had to take the beatings for Michelangelo because he was the biggest one or something, right? Like, yeah, and so like he was the one who sheltered Michelangelo, and that's why Michelangelo is still like kind of like, oh, and, it's fun, and, it's cool, cowabunga, like he's and that guy. And Donatello just does, does, does gets beaten so hard one time he doesn't speak for a year and just reads books, and that's right, why exactly. he's so smart. Yeah. <laughs> he, he becomes like a recluse. He's like a mute, right? Yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. He's mute. Is is, is that Splinter beats the shit out of him and like. Or and, like takes his vocal cords, like hits him in the throat, and like he's unable to speak Jeez. anymore. Um, and then Leonardo is the leader because he's he he took so much pain, and like he 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 has like this complex where he wants to be 
perfect for his master. Yeah. And so, so. he takes all the pain and oh, it'd be, this would be a badass take. That's a good idea. Yeah. What happened in your life? <laughs> I know, right? Man? But see, like that's I. Here's the thing: is like I just want <laughs> realism in my fantasy. Yeah. Well, I mean, the original um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comics yeah, were was pretty like brutal. gritty. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty yeah. brutal. Not quite as gritty as what I'm imagining. No. but. I mean, I don't know. I haven't read them, so I'm fine with everything except the weird splinter getting off on the the, <laughs> the, the, the turtle flower penis. I gotta draw one because, like, I've seen those things like in like in real life, and they're creepy. Real, why? Why have you seen those at the, at the zoo? Like the turtle, like the mating. I, I was, I was, I was, I was witness. To... <laughs> You're gonna have to please go explain this more to dig yourself out of this I was, hole. I was witness to a turtle mating once, and because it just happened to be like happening. how how much of a witness like you were involved in it. <laughs> Witness does not mean involvement. Witness means I saw it, and it was really. You gr- might have saw it right before it plunged into your butthole. <laughs> no, it was. It was not. It's not cool. It's not cool. I don't want to talk about it. Fon, also, what's, what's your they idea? They make a sound. They make a horrible. Yeah, sound. Yeah, they screech. It's terrible. What do they sound like? They're like it's like a screeching banshee. It? No, try, try. I can't. Like, right. <laughs> yeah, it's like a honky screech. It's like a, it's like a geese on cocaine. <laughs> that reminds me. Have you ever heard a peacock? Like a peacock sound? Yeah. It's the most terrifying fucking sound. I saw. Ever. I heard a peacock last summer in Hawaii. Oh, really? There was a peacock at this restaurant just chilling up on this thing, and it just started screeching. Oh, it was it, terrible. It, peacocks always sound like small children going, "Help me, <laughs> help me!" It's very, un, it's very it's unsettling. So oh, unsettling. What? Like I've heard one of my buddies used to uh, have a house, and there was like a family of peacocks who lived near it. So at night, you would hear like. Outside, oh it was god, the creepiest fucking thing. In Wait, the world. they literally sound like they're saying help. Yeah, me. they not sound that like... they sound really pathetic or something. No, no, they it's sound like, like they're silent, saying help. It's like me. Some Silent Hill shit. Yeah, it's Jesus. it's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. I'm gonna Google peacock sounds later. <laughs> What's your idea, Fong? Okay, so it's not flushed out, and really, it probably is more like a fanfic than anything else. But I think it would be cool, like. Because they have um, resurrected Evil Dead recently with Ash vs. Evil Dead. And it is a great show. But, like, think about all the roles that Bruce Campbell has played. And I think it would be really cool if, like... Because we established time travel is a thing in that universe. Yeah. Okay. So, like, imagine if you time traveled and ran into, like... Briscoe County Jr. That's so weird. Oh, that's that you cool. went to Briscoe County. That was the first one I went to. Briscoe County Jr. <laughs> I fucking love that. That, that makes sense though. Or like Autolycus and Xena and Hercules. Oh, okay. Like because time travel is a thing, and it's just him like bouncing around to all these different roles, uh, different Wait, worlds. Would like it be Bruce like Campbell fight- doing it. No, it would be Ash. Okay. Like oh, like chasing Ash down fighting, the Necronomicon. Ash fighting deadites throughout time. Yeah. Like, you know, they crop up everywhere. That's kind of cool. Yeah. In in roles that he's played. And then, like... So he, like, quantum leaps into that character? Would that be the... No, no. It's just him meeting other characters he's okay, played. Okay, so then it would be, like... He, they do, like, the, the split screen type of thing. Where, yeah. Like, okay. All right. That's yeah. cool. I'm like, down with that. I can get down with that. I think, I think it may, may be better as a comic than a show. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't mind seeing Yolis again. <laughs> I, mean, I could get down with that. Like, and then Elvis with Dick Cancer... Okay. From from Bubba Hotep. Oh yeah, oh, wow. I forgot about that movie. Wow, Bubba Hotep. What yeah, a, like that would be hilarious as well. That's a great idea. That's a cool idea. That would be, that would be kind of a dope idea. I'm not I'm not overly familiar with like the yeah, Evil Dead I'm, I'm, franchise. I mean, I, I know the Evil Dead movies, but a yeah. lot of a lot of Bruce Campbell's other stuff I'm not too familiar with. Uh, like, were you a fan of the uh, Hercules and Xena and stuff? Um, oh yeah, I was a fan of Xena. Xena. You were a fan of Xena? I like I liked both of them, but uh I, Hercules was boring to me for some reason. I liked Hercules. Oh, I, I, I was Sorrow actually was I was a bigger fan of He was the 90s rock. He was. He Kevin was Sorrow. the Kevin 90s, rock. The 90s he rock. Yeah. He he reminds me or the, those shows always remind me of a very particular time in my life. Yeah. Of like when I was very coming of age. I remember Do you remember when uh before Hercules was a show? Yeah. It, it was, was a, mo- TV it was a movie. series yeah. of TV movies. Yep. Um, I remember there was one about, uh, like, he goes to Hades, mm-hmm. and there was this one where he, the girl that offers herself to him in that show, like, she strips down and, like, yeah. he doesn't fuck her. And yeah. I remember as an adolescent, I was like, why wouldn't you fuck her? <laughs> that was... 
<laughs> like, uh, and I was in my grandpa's house <laughs> watching TV. It's probably sitting next to my grandpa. I don't remember that. Yeah. But I remember just sitting there being like, I would fuck her. Why wouldn't Why? you fuck her? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't understand. I could not process it. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, and no, no, I, I, I concur. It was a very coming of age era for me too. Yeah, yeah. And I remember, I remember thinking like, "Wow, Zena's really hot." And it was at that time when I was transitioning. Like at first, I watched it because I had watched Hercules, and Zena was a character in Hercules. Right, right. And so when when Hercules was on, I was in like late elementary school. Yeah. And Zena wasn't like hot to me. And then as I started transitioning, and she got her own show, gradually she became like this. Like hot to me. I'm See, like Zena never did it first. Too strong of a jaw. Really? Yeah. Well, and Gabrielle. Too. Gabrielle, Gabrielle was Gabrielle. super but hot. I, start, as well. I, started, I started noticing, and I'm like, why is she? What's different about her? What's changed? And then I, it was kind of like, no, very. It's me that's changed. It's me changing. <laughs> very yeah, very coming of age era. I totally concur. But um, yeah, I I just thought it was cool because it was like she kicked so much ass. Yeah. And she was a woman, and we didn't really have that back then. And yeah. shot and chakrams don't get enough press. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. That's chakrams true. do not get enough press. <laughs> Uh, ah! Do do you remember the that period of time when those shows were coming on? It was called the Action Pact. That was the name. Yeah. Of, that was the name of that. Yeah. That block of really. Programming. I did One not of the know other that. Shows oft forgotten is a show called Vanishing Sun. Oh my god! I, I, remember, I, remember, I remember that, that show. I, I, I didn't think of it until you forgot. Until you mentioned it. It was it. It's. A story which is about an Asian American, uh, two Chinese American or Chinese brothers. Okay, they escape, uh, kind of like a Tiananmen Square esque type of situation. Okay, and flee to America. And then it's a story about one of them is, uh, like a musician. He's like a violinist, but he's uh-huh. also like very good at kung fu. And then his brother, who's kind of like the perpetual fuck up, but becomes like in with the Chinese gangsters in America. And it's like a coming of age story and it's also like a immigrant story it's really fucking good it's a great fucking show i wonder if it's on netflix it's not not, i I look for it everywhere um really i'm sure it's terrible uh, (laughs) but i remember it as a kid being because it was formative to me because i was like oh it's it's oh i would fuck her (laughs) he the violinist kung fu guy Uh ends up with uh a girl who was on 90210, uh-huh. uh, a very good-looking girl. And it's a girl that I'm sure... I can't think of her name, but I'm sure you would know her if you saw her. Look up Vanishing Sun on IMDb. You will know this girl. Okay. Um, All right. But the it was a it was a very reminiscent story. So between Hercules and Vanishing Sun, uh-huh. as those two shows, like, I fucking... Like, that's my child. That was a child right, right there. there. Like, that was my first introduction to, like, live action TV that I really, really enjoyed and felt like, this is serious. This is real. This could happen. Like, that type of shit. Oh, man. Does anyone remember Beastmaster as well? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Beast... The TV show, not yeah. the movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The TV show. Yeah. The TV show Beastmaster, I totally remember that. On WGN. Yep. WGN watching. had all the action vlogs. Yeah. So, speaking of stories we like, before we end tonight, let's make one. Okay. okay. All right. So, let's pick a character we all can handle. Uh, how are we so this? so so we'll okay. Let's do it this way. Do we want to do a comic book character? Yes or no? Uh, well, okay. How about we do it this way? Okay, we'll do it. Uh, one person picks a character. One person picks a villain for that character. Okay, and then one person picks a setting, and then we riff off that. Okay. Okay. All right. So Fong, you pick. You pick. This way. Yeah. Oh, I'm you picking pick the a character. Hero. Pick a protagonist. You, you pick a protagonist. Okay. Any protagonist. All right, I'll just fucking maybe one we haven't talked about yet tonight. Oh shit, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> um, do you got one, Bobby? What's that? You got a protagonist in mind, or? Um, I'm trying to think of one that's kind of nobody does not get enough press at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can uh, Gambit. Out. I don't know. Gambit. Gambit. There we go. I love it. I love okay. it. Okay, we got Gambit. All right. Pick all a right. villain, Bobby. A villain. Does it have to be from Marvel? Uh, I would Should we keep it in universe? I would say keep it in universe so like theoretically yeah. this property could actually happen. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh Marvel villain, let's go with uh Oh man. Um How about I need something char- somebody charismatic. Um Oh, someone in the same. Uh who's who's the who's the um the leader of the Hellfire Club? Oh, uh, like the well the leader, I mean, the White Queen was one of the prominent members. There yeah. Was, 
Shaw, I think was Sebastian the, Shaw was Sebastian the leader. Shaw was right? the leader. Um, maybe he, maybe he's not. He's kind of charismatic. I'm trying to think of. Uh, I could see. I I if it, I could see if we did a White Queen, who is, you know, a very sexy kind of. Yeah, that kind of works with Gambit's level. Okay, so then you do like a modern day setting. <laughs> Of course, because like, okay. I like I, I like internal drama and not necessarily a lot of okay. Like, so we got Gambit versus the White Queen. Okay, right. and then what the story is is that it's versus the White Queen, but not in like a physical confrontation. It's that Gambit has to choose between the White Queen, who and, is trying to seduce him constantly, and Rogue. Yeah. Rogue, yeah, and it becomes this terrible quarrel of. One night, Gambit is in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. He's in the bayou. Yeah. And he, uh, mon ami. <laughs> <laughs> mon cher. Mon cher, yeah. Um, and so one night, he's going to take care of some stuff with the thieves, the thieves guild. The thieves guild. And uh, gets real drunk on whatever bayou moonshine that they have. Bayou shine. Bayou shine. And I would say that maybe he makes a very poor decision. About hooking up with the White Queen. Okay, because she's she's trying to seduce him. Uh, she just happens to be at the same bar, and she's willing. You know what's really okay. cool about Rogue versus the White Queen huh. is that Rogue is like all about physical power, right? And the White Queen has all these crazy mental powers, right? Well, here here would be the thing is like they end up fucking in the, like a the bathroom, like really dirty, like yeah. like he bends her over a stall. Does, she's d- does she her. kind of mind wipe him, like make him pretend it's it's not her? No, no, just... like he just he just does it. Okay, because he's horny. Yeah. Drunk. Also, is my... he currently is he currently dating Rogue? Yes. Or... Okay. Uh, yeah, he cheats on Rogue. Okay. Shit. And then the whole story would revolve around his guilt and how he has to hide this from Rogue, <laughs> <laughs> and like how he tries to play it off, but constantly he thinks about the White Queen. Yeah. And the versus part of the story is him versus him escaping Rogue to go jerk off by himself. Thinking about this, this other is, <laughs> no, this has to be a, this has to be a, a, a filmable comic book. Or this would be filmable. This would be like like original sin or like some type of like you know. Uh, no, here, here, here's what <laughs> I'm. Thinking. Wait, this is my question though. Given Gambit's powers, you know he can kinetically charge anything. When he jerks off, does like the splooge just it? like shoot <laughs> through? Breaks through like, walls. like yeah, breaks through walls. Logan's like ah, oh, uh, damn it again. again. Well, but Fuck would, you, Bib! Here would be the drama of it: is that like Rogue can't hook up with Gambit in a meaningful way, yeah. right? But she, she can give him but, hand jobs, but she can't blow him or she can't have have sex unprotected with him. intercourse with him. Right? Because, That's not true. Sure. There are dental dams. Right, but it's eh, she could it's put not, his, not the same. Fucking put a what if uh, what if out of her ang- what if out of her anger she steals his powers away like almost permanently? Oh, or like maybe they, they think it's permanent, like she did with uh, Miss Marvel. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then so then Gambit's powerless, and now um, the X Men can't use him anymore, and so they ditch him. Right, and so now he's, and then he goes back to the White Queen, and yeah. he's like, he's like, Mon cher, she left me, and I have to be with you. <laughs> and then, and then she's like, I'm not interested in fucking you if you have no power. Yeah, you exactly, idiot. right? Yeah. yeah. And then it's like he has to live with the guilt of like he created this whole situation for himself. Yep. And then like. Like he's he tries to like he goes back to Rogue and he's like please mon ami please let me explain mon cher I I am it is only because I cannot touch your pussy <laughs> and I had to go find some wet spot with and, the white queen and now Rogue can't why co- did he become Italian now 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 Rogue, now Rogue That's just my really bad friend and now Rogue. Not only can she not touch other people, she has no control over Gamma's powers because she absorbed them all so quickly. Right. Now she can't touch anything. Anything. Right, right, right. Anything. She has to be in a bubble. Oh, right. yeah. Oh. So now she's fucked, too. Right. So right. everybody just fucked each other. <laughs> oh, I love it. Right. It, this is like the most depressing so now, now, story. No, now, and then, now, and then now, Ash shows up chasing no, the Necronomicon. No, no, like, now, what the fuck now is the this? X, now the X-Men can't use uh, Gambit or Rogue. Right. So now everybody's on their own, right. and then the White Queen goes back to Spash and Shaw's like, hey, now's a good time to fucking attack the X-Men. They just lost two of their best. Right. Well, and then and then what happens, here's the internal conflict, is that, like, one night, uh, like, like the, obviously Cyclops and Jean, because we're, we're taking place in a universe where Cyclops and Jean are still together. Okay. Yeah. Cyclops and Jean go to bed together, and, like, they're kind of, you know, they've had a couple drinks. At, like, they went out with Rogue, and Rogue's, like, crying on their shoulder explaining yeah. the situation. But and not literally. Not literally. She can't do that. Right. Good girl. Um, but Crying in her, bro- in her bubble. Right. <laughs> and so, like, so like, Gene is like, oh, Gambit's such a dick. I can't believe Remy would do that. 
And Cyclops is like, well, you know, like, I, I get it. And like, so then they have, like, this huge fucking blowout. She's uh, like, I can't believe you're siding with Remy on this, Scott. And then Scott's like, oh, no, you know, I, I just understand. Like, a man has certain needs. And, like, Rogue couldn't What are you them. saying? That's yeah. what you and then think Wolverine, about? And then Wolverine steps in because he hates fucking Remy LeBeau anyway. Right. So he's like, dude, that, that bub was bad news from day one. So <laughs> then, then Cyclops and Wolverine are at it again right, right. on a new level. Right. And, and so then they're fighting. Right. And then the whole House of X is in disarray. Right. And then what ends up happening is Sebastian Shaw shows up with the Hellfire. With uh, Hellfire Club. Right. And then there's just nothing left. They're yeah. They're all just like fighting with each other. And there's just nothing for them to do. They just go, let's just pack it up. Let's just pack gonna, it up. We're, we're just going to let leave. them do their thing. And Civil War right. pussy problems. Right. <laughs> oh, that would oh be, there we go. That, and that's what it is. It's like you, that, that is the X-Men's version of Civil War. There we, we, need, we need a title. How about House of Sex? And with like House Professor, of Sex. With <laughs> Professor Xavier's X in there. Right, right. Oh, man. Or... um. I know that's that's the title, but but you, you, Gambit and oh, do you, okay? We got ourselves a we got ourselves a fucking comic. We got ourselves a show. <laughs> this would be a comic. I love that would it. Be so cool, but It'd like so it could never be made. Like well, Marvel doesn't have the balls to make this fucking comic. Not now, but we're maybe a few years down the line. Why am I so intrigued by like family? I'm just yeah. Like, you're drama. you're very intrigued by like mundane everyday shit injected into like these morose yeah. just. Terrible, and not even like the things. nice stuff of like how the fuck does Captain America suddenly know how to use a computer in right, like right. a few months? Right. Yeah. But more just like how do you deal with these big issues that like everybody kind of has to deal with? Yeah. But like how do you deal with them as a super powered person? level? Right. Yeah. Like I, I I'm very fascinated. Just like I mean we we talked about it on the cast before like in Star Wars. I'm very fascinated by the idea of that, like, cat, like Han Solo and Princess Leia couldn't hold a marriage together. Like, right. that's yeah. the most fascinating part of that was, that was the, that was the clincher for you. <laughs> yeah, it's like what happened? Like, what were they? What were they doing? Yeah. Well, I recently was thinking about. Uh, I saw Speed on TV. Yeah. Okay. And then it was followed by Speed Two. Yeah. And Keanu isn't back in Speed Two. Right. So, like, it it led me to this question of like. How the fuck do you guys not hold a marriage? How does Sandy Bullock and Keanu Reeves not hold a marriage? Together? Like they went through this crazy fucking experience, yeah, and they couldn't hold a relationship. Well, the thing about it is, sometimes when the relationship is based on a like one moment or one pivotal thing, then if that's all there is to it, then eventually that that the novelty of that shit wears out. Right. It's like, well. Go on, have some new shit happen to you, and then let's let's figure it out. See, and, but I, and if you can't have a new some new shit happen to you, then they, they but you can't always business. have a bus that needs to go. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. do they do they try to? Well, because <laughs> nothing not, their not, nothing can... with with like a bomb and a bus, <laughs> a bomb not, not... under the toilet. Like, that's like... <laughs> nothing can live up to that hype though, because so it's like you've already maxed out, you've saturated the relationship's right. ex- excitement level. And it's it's it, it's totally nothing compares to the hypeness of that, and then it's kind of fizzles out. And but see, like to me, that's what Speed Two should have been. Like they shouldn't have went back to like the well of like action adventure. They should have went into the home life of Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock's characters. In see, those but movies. for most people, nobody give a fuck. Well, no, but see, like that's the most interesting part. Is also, like how that falls apart to you. Unfortunately. Yeah, right. Also, I think that happened because Keanu didn't sign on for two well, for whatever regardless reason, regardless of whether he signed on or not. Like that's the character moment that I want. It's like I want to see the home life of these people because, like, you know that right after, right after the credits of Speed, they went and got an apartment together. Like, they started doing brunch all the time. You want more reality and less fantasy? Yeah, yeah. 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 I want, I want reality in my. Fantasy. Gotta, gotta balance that. Maybe they could make start structuring novels and movies so that it oscillates between like, okay, well, the first one saving the world, second one getting an apartment, third right. one <laughs> alternate dimension invasion, fourth one. Uh, buying a, buying a home, right, right, right. Like, 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 like home the, renovations, the, adopting a pet, right. The, the couple arguing about one wanting to go and spend money at Whole Foods and the other one wanting to spend money at Costco. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> see, like, and those are real problems. Those are real things that I want to see dealt with <laughs> in media. Well, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column well, B. Well, I I feel like there's more of a move towards that now, of because like. How do you fucking deal with that shit as a superhero? And that's why we're seeing more, like, I don't know. I feel like we're seeing a bit more humanism in our comics and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, because like, you, there's, how many times can you write a comic about an interdimensional being coming in and destroying everything right, and, and you're punching, punching it? it and then, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think, I think one of the new shows that's supposed to be coming out for ABC, which is the first Marvel property on TV that I'm really interested in, is Damage Control. It's essentially, mm-hmm. like... 
it's about like an office. It's a workplace comedy. Oh yeah, about oh, okay. the people who have to like pick up after all the superheroes. <laughs> and I think it stars uh Danny Pudi, who is Abed in Community. Oh, oh cool. Yeah. Uh, oh, I think I heard of that. But yeah, the key yeah. with that, things like that is to make it interesting enough without having the actual draw of the superhero. Right. But see, like that is interesting to me. Like, how does that? Sh- like, how do they fix New York after? As long as they give us enough of a little. Dead doses of the fantastical to keep it kind of right, going, that is grounded yeah. pepper in that it in. But yeah, like, but yeah, like that's the kind of shit that I'm interested in. I'd like, be down to watch that. Yeah. See, it's another get another thing. Like you more you more practical and more fantastical. Yeah, yep. yeah. I just want practicality. Practicality. In all of By the way, practicastical. Practicastical. She sums it up real nice. Watch preacher. Did you? Did we see the preview? For yeah, preview. Oh, I, the preview, oh, the preview good. looked amazing. Oh, it's coming on right after um uh uh Wind Night up. Manager uh, oh. finishes up. So okay. it's next in my queue. So oh. we'll we'll do we'll do some AMC like reviewing. With I don't know if we've ever talked about it, but I'm like a huge preacher fan. Oh yeah, I love fucking preacher. You're gonna have to educate me next time. Uh, when we when we we start watching it. Okay, just. As a little tease for the next time. Yeah. Yeah. Preacher is the comics that got me back into comics when I had fallen out. Like, I had fallen out of comics when I was probably, like, 12. Yeah. And I didn't get back into it till I was probably, like, 16 or 18, some somewhere around there. Like, wow. late high school. Yeah. And Preacher was what brought me back in. We all of Sandman was that for me. Okay. Yeah. What, we, should, we should have a what brought it. We should have, we have a cast on that. What brought us back into things we dropped. Oh, yeah. Let's mm-hmm. do that. All right. Well, then, uh, until next time, we've got a little bit of uh, a little creative fan fiction. We got a little bit creative today. So, thank you guys for sharing your awesome ideas. Thank you, sir. And uh, until next time, you've been nerd funneled. Bye, mon chéri. Bye.